So here, I have a circuit which has a resistor and a capacitor. So circuits which, which has resistors and capacitors are called RC circuits. So RC circuits, it's nothing special. If it has a resistor and a capacitor both, or a bunch of resistors and bunch of capacitors together, it, they are called RC circuits. So this is our RC circuit, right? We have a resistor and a capacitor. So let's assume that this capacitor is not charged. Okay, this is not charged. So it is a blank capacitor. Nothing is there, no charge. So when, and I have connected it to this circuit and I haven't uh, closed the switch. That means still the circuit is open. No current or nothing flows through it yet. Okay. So are we okay after there? It's fine. There's nothing still, but let's start it now. So let's assume a scenario where I close this circuit. Closing means now the circuit is connected. Okay, now the wires are connected. A closed circuit. So I'm going to look at at t equals zero. t equals zero means the moment I close this switch. So before going into that, Let's look at the voltages in the circuit. Okay. So we have R and C resistor and a capacitor connected to this battery. Since this is a closed circuit now, since I have closed the switch, the voltage given by the battery is equal to the voltage across the resistor times the voltage across the capacitor, right? From Kirchhoff law, we know the total voltage Vb is voltage across the resistor plus the capacitor. So are we okay with that equation? Yes, so this is easy, right? Okay, so here I have written that equation. So the next step is, how can you find the the uh, voltage across the resistor from Ohm's law, right? V equals IR. You all know that already. So how to find the voltage across the resistor? You multiply the current through it by the resistance, right? So our VR is equal to I times R. How to find the voltage across a capacitor? From this equation, right? Q equals CV. This is the equation of a capacitor, right? So voltage across the capacitor is given by charge of the capacitor divided by the capacitance. So are we okay with these two things? We know how these come, right? You all are very familiar with these two. So in this equation, what I have done is I have replaced VR with IR and voltage across capacitor by Q over C. So are we okay with this equation as well? So if we know this equation, these two equations, it's easy to do any problem. So are we okay with this? So I'm going to erase all the ink in this slide. Okay. So with this, so we will need these two when we when we are going to look at t equal zero and this part. 
at t equal zero. T equal zero means the moment I close the circuit, right? The moment I close the circuit, is my capacitor charged? No, right? I haven't even started charging the capacitor. We you know we connect at a capacitor which is not charged. So the moment I close the switch, still it is not charged. So at t equal zero, the charge in my capacitor is zero, right? So are we okay with this? That the charge in the capacitor is zero. Yes. So that is the starting point. If you can figure it, figure this part out, all the things become very easy. Okay. So my next question is at t equal zero, what is the voltage across the capacitor? So we know voltage across the capacitor is given by this, right? This equation. The voltage across the capacitor is given by Q divided by C. So look at this equation and tell me what should be the voltage across the capacitor? What should it be? Zero, right? So it is also zero. Why there is no charge in the capacitor? So if you didn't know this, it's hard to figure this out, right? It, it can be very confusing to just think of the capacity, uh, voltage across the capacitor. So always go in this order. Okay. Since the capacity is not charged, charge is zero. Voltage across a capacitor is given by this equation. So because of that, voltage across the capacity is also zero. So we are okay with these two. So the next question is, what is the voltage across your resistor? So if I rewrite the equation, we know voltage of the battery is given by uh, voltage of the resistor plus voltage of the capacitor, right? So we figured out at t equals zero, voltage across the capacitor is zero. So if that is the case, what is the voltage across your resistor? It is completely VB, right? The whole voltage of the battery is now across your resistor. So it is equal to VB. So this is the maximum voltage that we can have, right? Because voltage is given by the battery and the resistor is taking all the voltage now. So this is the maximum voltage the resistor can have, right? Also, we know this is equal to IR. Okay, so you are okay with VR. So at t equals zero, the whole voltage is with the resistor. There's no voltage for the capacitor. So last part, what is the current through the circuit? At this point, what is the current through the circuit? So current is connected to the resistor, right? So we can figure out current from this part. You know, for the resistor, for the resistor voltage was VB and it was equal to I times R. So from this, we can get the current. Current is VB divided by the resistance. So this is the current through your circuit at t equals zero. At the moment you close the switch, this is the current which will go through the circuit. And this will also be the maximum current, right? Because voltage is maximum here. This is the maximum voltage. Therefore, at t equals zero, the current through the circuit will be maximum. 
this voltage is maximum here. Okay. So are we okay with this, 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 and this? Yes. So this is very important. And like uh, most of the conceptual problems will ask you about this. So conceptual problems on this will be at t equals zero, what is the current through the circuit? At t equals zero, what is the voltage across the resistor? So they can just ask you things, but you have to know to go with this order. So go in this order, write it down inside of, uh, in the side of a paper. Then you can just look at this and answer. So you are okay with this. Now let's go to the other scenario. So this is one very important at t equals zero. Now this is at infinity. So when t is infinity means now your bat, uh, now your capacitor is fully charged. But that is what they are, uh, what they mean by infinity or long enough. When you wait long enough. Your capacity is charged. Okay. What is meant by infinity or long enough is your capacity is fully charged. Okay. So this is something that you have to know. Let's start from current in this. Okay. So when your capacitor is fully charged, okay, fully charged means now. This plate will have plus Q and this plate will have minus Q, right? Fully charged. Current will no longer pass through the circuit. Okay? That is like a fact that you have to know. When it is fully charged, there is no way that, no reason for the current to flow, right? Because there is a gap in the middle. And since these two plates are having the full capacity, full capacity of charges, even charges will not move from this plate to this, plate, uh, this side or this side. So if you wait long enough till your capacity is, capacity is charged, the current through the circuit will be zero. Okay, so that is the starting point of this. When you start with this, you can Keep on deriving the others. So are you okay with this? This is something you have to know. Remember, okay? When your capacitor is completely charged, no current will flow through the circuit. Okay, now let's go to this part. If current doesn't flow through the circuit, what is the voltage across your resistor? The voltage across the resistor is given by this this equation right this expression so it should be zero right no current no voltage so we get the voltage across the resistor through this equation so the voltage across your resistor oops, sorry is zero This is zero. So we are okay with this. Why do I keep cutting things today? Okay. Now can you tell me this one? What is the voltage through your capacitor? So I'm, I'm getting the answer very good. So it is VB. So we can use this equation, right? You know, VB is equal to VR plus VC. So we know the voltage across the resistor is zero. Because of that, the whole voltage VB is now with the capacitor. Voltage across your capacitor is now VB and it is maximum. So voltage of the capacitor becomes maximum when we wait for a long time, right? 
So if I kind of draw the diagram, at t equals zero, voltage voltage across the capacitor is zero, right? At t equals infinity, voltage across the capacitor becomes Vb. So it is increasing with time, right? So in the next slide, we will learn about this curve. So it is increasing like this. So we will learn about this equation later. So we know this, but can you tell about the charge in the capacitor? Very good. So we know uh, Q equals CV. So now the capacitor has a voltage of VB across it. So your charge QC is C times VB. So this is the maximum charge, right? It makes sense, right? At the moment you connect the capacitor, it won't be charged. So after some time, it will be charged. So it also kind of flow, uh, follows a similar trend. Charge of the capacitor also follows a trend like this. At t equals zero, nothing. When you wait long enough, it comes to the maximum. So are we okay with this? Okay, so you are okay with these shapes, right? You understand that at t equals zero, this is zero, and this is increasing. What about the resistor? No, let's look at the current. So at t equals zero, so current through the circuit, it was maximum, right? See, it was maximum at t equals zero, and it was zero after some time so it starts from zero and go to zero uh, sorry start with the maximum and go to keep on reducing so if you know these two things a and b what is the condition when time is zero and what is the condition at infinity or till you wait till it's fully charged if you know this, you can figure out the shape of the curve, right? Okay, so here I have a summary of what we did in the previous slide. So this is a summary. So we know what is happening at t equals zero and what is happening at t equals infinity. Or once your capacitor is completely charged. So now your capacitor is completely charged. So that is what we usually call infinity. We give enough time till the capacitor is fully charged. Okay. So we can see that the uh, charge in the capacitor has increased. Voltage across the capacitor has increased. Current to the circuit has decreased and the resistance uh, the voltage across the resistor has decreased so like i said in the previous uh, slide we see two types of behaviors increasing behaviors and decreasing behaviors so the good part is that all of these behave into like only in two ways so what I mean by two ways is anything which increases, anything which has an increasing trend, for example, let's uh, consider Q for now. So Q has an increasing trend. We'll have this equation. So the Q right now, Q at time t, is equal to the maximum Q value we can have times, so this is a bracket, one minus e to the power negative time divided by RC. 
So this is the general equation for an increasing trend. You have the, so this is the value at time t. And this is the maximum value your Q can have. And then you have one minus E T to the uh, T divided by RC. So if I rewrite this equation with the maximum Q value, we know the maximum Q value the capacitor can have is C times VB. So if I replace it, the maximum Q value with C times VB, this is my equation. And in the same way, we have uh, an increase in trend for the voltage across the capacitor. So if I follow the same format, the voltage or the potential difference, so this is the potential difference at time t, It is equal to the maximum voltage it can have Vmax times 1 minus E T divided by RC. So if I rewrite this again, what is the maximum voltage it can have? Vb, right? So your voltage at any time T can be found using this equation. 1 minus E T over RC. So can you see that, so these are the only, uh, these are the two quantities which shows, uh, uh, which shows an increase in trend. So they both have a very similar equation. They both follow the same format. The value at time t is equal to the maximum value times this part. So here also the voltage at time t is equal to the maximum voltage it can have times this factor. And if I draw the circuit, I mean if I draw the if I draw the graph, this is how it will vary. So it starts from zero and it will reach the maximum. So this is the maximum value. Maximum value means this part. So for Q, it will reach this value. So if this is the Q graph, your maximum will be C, V, B. It will reach maximum at infinity. So in the same way, your voltage will also have a similar graph, but uh, this graph will reach the maximum of VB at infinity. So this is the general format of your increasing trend. Easy, right? Okay, so we know what to do with increasing trends. The next part is, what about this? What about a decreasing trend? We can see the current through the circuit started from the maximum and then decreased. So when we have a decreasing trend, so I will use a different color. Okay, when we have a decreasing trend, your equation will be, so I'll start with current. So your current equation, so this is your I, at time t. Time t means any time that you like. So if I want you to find the current at two seconds, what you would do is you will plug uh, two to the place where we have t in the equation. So the equation is very similar to the previous one, but a little different. different. So it also starts with the maximum value the current can have. But now you don't have that one minus part. Instead, you directly have the exponential factor E 
minus t divided by rc. So if I rewrite this equation by substituting the maximum, so this is the maximum value the current can have. So your equation will be current at time t is equal to vb divided by r e negative t divided by rc. So in the same way, let's write the equation for vr. So this is also a decreasing trend. So voltage of R, voltage across the resistor at any time t, at time t is equal to maximum value this voltage can have. So this is the maximum value it can have, right? So it is Vb. Since it's a, it's a decrease in trend, this will be your equation, T divided by Rc. So can you see that these are very easy? They follow the same trend. So if you know whether it's a decrease in trend or an increase in trend, you can easily write the equations. So these equations will, will look like this. It starts with the maximum. It starts with the maximum and then reaches zero at infinity. See, at infinity, it will reach zero. So this is your decreasing trend equation. This is your increasing uh, trend equations. So example, current equation and the voltage across the resistor. Here increasing trend R, Q, charge of your capacitor and the voltage or the potential difference across the capacitor. So are we good with this? Okay, now let's move to the problems. So here, the first one, a resistor and a capacitor are connected in series. To an ideal battery of constant terminal voltage. At the moment, contact is made with the battery. So they are talking about the RC circuit because we have a resistor and a capacitor in series to a battery. So let us draw it. So we have our battery. We have a resistor. And we have the capacitor. So the moment it is connected to a battery, that means they are talking about T equals zero, right? So they're asking what is the voltage across the capacitor? We know at the moment it is connected, Q is equal to zero. Therefore, voltage across the capacitor is zero. Why? Q equals CV and your voltage across the capacitor, this V is given by Q over C. So since that there's no charge in the capacitor at time zero, your voltage across the capacity is also zero. So your answer is zero. Okay. So in the next part, a resistor, so we have the same circuit, resistor and a capacitor connected in series. Now they're asking us to find the voltage across the resistor. So here I haven't, in the summary part, I haven't written it down. Can you tell me what it would be? What is the voltage across the resistor at time zero? So we know voltage of the battery is divided among the resistor and the uh, capacitor. Why? They are in series, right? This is the resistor and this is the capacitor. Voltage of the battery is equal to Vr plus Vc. But we saw that Vc at time zero is equal to zero. Therefore, at time zero, your Vr or the voltage across the resistor is equal to Vb. The voltage of the battery is completely 
across the resistor. So it is equal to VB. In other words, equal to battery's terminal voltage. So the third problem. A resistor and a capacitor are connected in series to an ideal battery at constant terminal voltage. So very similar to the previous part. Now they are talking about a steady state. Steady state means once your battery, uh, once your capacitor is completely charged. Okay, so once this reaches steady state, no longer charges are moving, it's just come to an equilibrium. The voltage across the resistor is so now they are talking about T gone to infinity voltage across the resistor. What should it be? The voltage across the capacitor at time infinity is batteries uh, or the terminal voltage, right? So from again from this one we can deduce it. Vb is equal to Vr plus Vc at time infinity. This is equal to Vb. Therefore, your Vr voltage across the resistor is zero. So you can also check our previous summary how we derived this. So Vr is zero. So easy, right? So now we have a problem. We, so there is a 20 microfarad capacitor and it is charged. So it is being charged uh, through this resistor. So we have charged means we are, there is a battery. Okay, there is a battery in the circuit. That is why they tell that it is being charged. So we have this battery which we don't know anything about. But we know the value of the resistor, which is 50 kilo ohms. And also we know the capacitance, 20 microfarads. They're asking how long does it take for the capacitor to reach 90% of full charge? Ninety percent of full charge. Okay, so you can use both the equations, this and this one. If you remember the charge across the capacitor, C times V B. So you can use any of these equations. So fully charged means what? Fully charged means you have reached the maximum either voltage or the charge, right? So we can use both the equations. So I'll use this for now. But even if you use this, you will get the same answer. So this is my equation. So instead of C, V, B, I'll just write Q max for now the maximum charge it can have 1 minus E T O R C. Okay. What are they asking? They are asking how long does it take? That means they're asking us to find time so that the capacitor will reach 90% of the full charge. That means your Q value should be 90% of Q max, right? So how to write 90%? 90%. How do you take a percentage? 90 divided by 100, right? So you need to reach 90 over 100 of your Q max. So I'm going to substitute these values. So I'm going to substitute this for Q. So if I uh, simplify this, I'll get 0 0.9 Q max. So I want to reach this value, 90% of the full, full charge. And everything else in the equation is the same and we will be solving for T. 
So I'm not going to substitute for R and C right now. We will substitute it at the end. So we can see that Q max is common to both the sides. So it will get cancelled and we are left with 0 0.9 1 minus E negative T over RC. So we need to solve for T. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this E term to the other side of the equation and bring 0.9 to this side. So 1 minus 0 0.9 is equal to, oops, it's okay, okay, uh, E T over RC, so I'll rewrite it. So I will get E T minus R C and on the other side I have 1 minus 0 0.9. So this reduces to E minus T over R C equal to 0 0.1. So this part is new to you. You might know it but sometimes you might not know it. So how to solve this stuff? So to solve your E value, what you would do is if you look carefully in your calculator, there will be something called len, ln. It is called the natural log. So when we take, so I'll write it here. So when we take the natural log of an ex, uh, natural log of an exponential, for example, let's say e to the power x. When we take the natural log of an exponential, we get x. So we write whatever in the exponent, we get the whatever in the exponent as the answer. So if we have e to the power negative t over rc in the exponent, what would be what will be what we will be getting? We will get whatever here, right? So we will get negative t over rc as the answer. But this is an equation. Whatever we do to one side should be done to the other side. So we have to take the natural log of both sides. So we know how to simplify this part. You know, when we take the natural log of an exponent, exponential, we get the answer as negative t divided by rc. But in this part, we don't know the value. We have to log this in the calculator and get the answer. So if I do that, I get negative 2.3. So this is what I got. So since I don't have much room, I will do the rest in this side. So negative get cancelled. So we are left with T, T over RC equal to 2.3. So your T will be 2.3 times R times C. So what is your R? R was 50 kilo ohms. But we have to substitute in standard units. 50 kilo is 10 to the power 3. And what is your C? C is 20 microfarads. So 20, we have to convert micro 10 to the negative 6. So once you solve this, once you simplify this, what the answer you get will be in seconds. So I have got 2.3 or 2 seconds. So it takes 2.3 seconds for your capacitor to charge 90%. So your answer is 2.3 D. So is this clear? So this part is new to you. Some of you might know this, but you might need this to do problems. So 
I want you to learn this and practice this. Okay, so we are done with charging a capacitor, which is the hard part. Now we will go to discharging a capacitor. So discharging is easy. Why? We know at time zero. So discharging means what? Discharging means you have a fully charged capacitor. Now you have a fully charged capacitor. What you will be doing is you will remove it from the circuit. So previous circuit. In the previous circuit, we had a battery, right? So as long as this is connected to a battery, this will not get discharged. So what we are going to do is we are going to remove the battery. Okay, we are going to remove the battery and just connect your capacitor through a resistor. So what will happen? Now your the charger stored in the capacitor will start to power your circuit. It will start moving and the charges will be will start dissipating. So your uh, capacitor will be discharging, it will start discharging. So at t equals zero, what can you tell about at t equals zero? At t equals zero, it is fully charged, right? At the moment you remove from the battery, so at t equals zero, you, you have a completely charged capacitor and we are we just completed the circuit your capacitor is still fully charged so we know for a fully charged capacitor so it is a fully charged capacitor you know for a fully charged capacitor the charge q is the maximum what is the maximum q it is c times vb right so it is vb vb means the uh, voltage of the previous battery or the maximum voltage so it is c times vb vb is the terminal voltage of the battery you used to charge the capacitor. So it is same as what we did before. So Q will be maximum at t equals zero. And also we know voltage across the capacitor is equal to the terminal voltage of the battery. So from this equation, you can get it. So that is our uh, conditions at t equals zero for the capacitor. What can you tell about the resistor? What is the voltage across the resistor? So here we only have, we don't have a battery in this circuit, right? We don't have a battery in the circuit. So whatever the voltage across the capacitor is the voltage across the resistor. So it is also VB. So this is different from the charging case. So what can you tell about the current? Current is given by V equals IR, right, for the resistor. So since the voltage across the resistor is also VB, it is same as the voltage across the capacitor. Therefore, there will be current. So your current will be VB over the resistance. So this discharging of a capacitor is very easy. Why? Every parameter is maximum at t equals zero. And with time, it will start dropping. So not only VC and Q, VR and current will also follow a decreasing trend. So we know the equation for a decreasing trend. So the equation for a decreasing trend is the maximum value it can have E T over RC. In the same way for the current, 
it is the maximum value we can have the TORC. Okay, so this is easy for the discharging capacitor. All your equations have decreasing trend. Okay, now let's go to the problems under this. So we have a capacitor which is two microfarads and it is completely charged to 12 volts. So we know what this is, right? It is the voltage across the capacitor. At t equals zero, your VC is 12 volts. Then discharge through a 4, 10 to the power 6 resistor. They're asking how long will it take for the voltage across the capacitor to drop to 3 volts? So we can use this equation, right? Voltage across the capacitor at some time, at time t, is equal to the maximum voltage E T over R C. So let's substitute the values V C. So they want us to find the time when your voltage reaches 3. So V C is 3. V naught is 12. It's the maximum. E T over R C. So let's substitute for R C at the end. So when I simplify this, I get 0 0.25. How? 3 divided by 12 is 0 0.25 E T over R C. So you all know how to simplify this. So whenever you have an exponent, what would you do? You will take the ln, right? So you should take, since this is an equation, you have to take ln for the natural log of both the sides. So when I do that, so for len 0.25, I get negative 1.3862. And for this, we know this is the factor, negative T over RC. So I'll do the rest here. So your T over RC, because negative uh, is there in both the sides and it will get cancelled is equal to 1.3862. So your T is equal to 1.3862 times R times C. Now let's substitute. Your R is 4, 10 to the power 6 given in the problem and C is 2 microfarads. We have to convert microfarads to farads. So when you solve this, you get 11.0893, sorry, 11.96 seconds, 11 seconds. So your answer is B.